Let's get to it. Will you please turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. That's all from the mainland, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Because on the mainland church, when you say, turn your Bible, they just shout, glory. Exactly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So, so throughout this month, our focus has been drawing us to a deeper place spiritually. Drawing us to a deeper place spiritually. And it's amazing how, um, you know, um, it's amazing how this is one of the things that happened. My aunt came to stay with us, you know, for some days, some time ago. But, you know, me knowing my aunt because she'd always spend time with my family. I mean, not just my family. When I was younger, spent time with my, you know, my, 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 you know, my, how do you call my, my what? My parents' family, is that what I call it? It's in my family, right? Okay. I don't know how to call that, you know, so maybe just lend me English. And so she went, when she came and she said she couldn't sleep, but I've always known that even when I was young, when she comes between 8 and 9, she's gone to bed. But now 10, 11, she was struggling to sleep. And I was, and she thought, I have this pain, I have this, I have that. I said, oh, wow. I said, I'm so concerned because, I mean, you know, I've known you to be someone that sleeps 8, 9, and you're just sleeping. He said, now you say you don't sleep till like 11, 30. I'm like, I'm concerned. I said, let's go to the pharmacy. So we went to the pharmacy. And they checked our blood pressure. And when they checked our blood pressure, you know what we realized? What we realized was very, was very significant. It was this. Our blood pressure didn't come on. So they checked about two or three times. And they had to do it manually. And what did they manually? It ran about 240 or 260. And, you know, I don't even know what that means. So I told the pharmacist, I said, what do we buy? He said, at 260, you don't buy anything. The person is admitted in intensive care units because they can die right now. I said, what? I said, but she said, I said, that's how people die. They carry blood pressure for a long time. And I'm saying so because until you check yourself, you don't know what the pressure is. You, you know, there are things you must use to check yourself. So today as we teach, today as we teach on dealing with spiritual emptiness, some of you might feel like, oh, wow, you know, that's something I'm not very conversant with. But we need to check. We need to check. And we need, you, you know, you can say, I have good blood pressure, but until you use a machine, you can't tell exactly what your blood pressure is. And look at Revelation 3, verse 17. This is amazing because these people thought of them a certain way. God thought of them what? Another way. Revelation 3, verse 17. And this is what God said to a church. He says, because you say I'm rich. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, he says, you people say I'm rich. I'm increased in good and have nothing. Those people say, you know, everything is so okay. Everything is so nice. Everything is so rich. Everything is so wonderful. He says, and you did not know. This is now Jesus' perspective. He says, you did not know that you are what? Wretched. He didn't even say you are broke. He's, Jesus' perspective is like, you think you're rich, you're wonderful, you're okay. Jesus said, you are extremely wretched. It's possible to be spiritually empty and not know it. And the reason why you don't know it is because, number one, you've not paid attention to it. And number two, because not only have you not paid attention to it, but number two, the things, the indicators that says you're spiritually strong are not the right indicators. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Jesus said, you're wretched. What did he say? He says, Jesus said, you don't know that you're wretched. You are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, and you're naked. In their own estimation, we are rich, we are wealthy, we are doing well, and everything seems okay. In the estimation of Jesus, you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind. And, and the reason why is that there's a way God looks at things. And I want to use this as an example. There's a way that God looks at things. There's a nice donut. Who wants it? All of you are fasting. Thank you for being honest. Even though I know you're lying. <laughs> From the human perspective, when you look at this donut, can you see? What do you see? It's full-fledged out of donuts. That's how human beings see it. Because human beings have a sideways view to life. How does God see it? God sees it this way. What does God see? God sees what is full-fledged side and God sees the whole. And this is how people look at their life. They look at it from the outside. They forget that at the core, they are empty. At the core, there is a hole. At the core. Someone says, what is a hole there? 
Ecclesiastes 3, 11 says something. God says, my paraphrase, I'll put it on the screen. Paraphrase. God says, when I made man, I put a God-sized hole inside so that man will never be complete without me. So, this is like every man. Every man has what? A God side hole inside. Every man has what? A God side hole inside. Every man has what? A God side hole inside. The thing is this, and this is the problem. We keep looking at men and say, oh my God, see how she is on Instagram. Because all we can see is the exterior. We can see the inside. We see their car and say, she must be so happy because you can see the exterior. We see the family and say, oh, such a great family because we see the exterior. God says, I can see the exterior, but I also see the interior. At the interior, there's a big hole. There's a big hole. And you wonder, how come those people with all the money are doing cocaine? And the reason why they're doing cocaine is this they're trying to fill this hole this hole is crying for attention so they go and get some cocaine hoping cocaine will fix it but the challenge is this this hole is a god-sized hole there's nothing that man has made that can fill a god-sized hole some people say let me get married that's the challenge you get married and when you get married you understand that a man cannot fill a god-sized hole a woman cannot fill a god-sized hole some people say let me make some more money you make some more money and you find now it can fit a god size oh the reason why is this when you make the money it's not enough you make more money it's not enough because the hole is not designed to be filled by cash that's why sometimes when you come across some of the greatest men when it comes to our culture they're very empty sometimes when you meet all the instagram slick queen and influencers when they begin to talk to you, they're all empty, depressed, and frustrated. Sometimes when I have conversation, they will say, everybody thinks I'm happy, but I am not happy. Because all of us keep seeing them on the outside. And I'm saying this to you because some of you are here. Everybody thinks you're fine. Everybody thinks marriage is fine. Everybody thinks you're doing okay. But you know on the inside, you are dying. You know you are dying. You know you are dying. And because there's this empty space within that is wrecking you i know you're making money but you've been wrecked i know you're doing well but you're still unfulfilled there is something on the inside and that's why you think if i got married it will change now you're married for three years it's gotten worse you thought if i made more money to change now you're a billionaire it hasn't changed now you're doing cocaine nicotine smoking reefer drinking whatever you want to drink doing mixture chemical student it hasn't changed chemistry does not change biology are you here somebody and the worst thing is people that get married hoping to fill a hole because man cannot fill a hole that is God's size and that's why when the woman with the issue of blood and where the woman where the five husband went to the well when she went to the well she why does she go to the well in the afternoon because that's not the time you go to the well except you're hiding people go to the well in the morning and in the evening because the water is cool the water is fresh the water is not troubled the water is not why did she go in the afternoon because she was hiding she didn't want all the other girls that go to the world to talk about her so she went to the well. she was something she was hiding and as soon as she got to the world did you notice it's a public well, but it was just she and jesus because that's not a time people visit the well so she knows how to sneak some of you keep sneaking hoping that the sneaking will you you have a big cover over your problem you're sneaking you hide over your career you hide over church activities you hide over your position but we can tell you're sneaking because there's something to hide and Jesus Christ said, I'm here. And she was shocked to see Jesus Christ at the well. And when he saw him, long and short, Jesus Christ says, you need water. <laughs> and he says, you're crazy. I brought the bucket to fetch water. You have no bucket. And you said, I need to get water. Jesus Christ said, it's not the water you came to fetch here. And I said, okay, what water do I need? And to show what water she needed, Jesus Christ moved into a super lunar dimension. Jesus Christ says, go and call your husband. And why did Jesus Christ say so? Because there's something about what she was looking for that she didn't find in men. So she said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus Christ said, you are right. Because you have had what? Five husbands. And Jesus was saying to her, all the while you were with the first guy, there was something we were looking for. 
he didn't give to you. You moved to the second guy. Some you're looking for, he didn't give to you. You moved to what? The third guy. Some you're looking for, he didn't give to you. You go to. And people keep recycling relationships, hoping that man will give them what only God can give them. And some people live in that kind of marriage and they really feel disappointed, they feel depressed, they feel, you know, they feel crushed because they're hoping that their wife will give them only what God can give. They're hoping that their husband will give them only what God can give. They're hoping that, and listen to me, it's a God-sized hole. And Jesus said, listen, you've been in those five relationships because you were thirsty and you've gone to all those five men hoping that they will meet your thirst. He said, but I'm here right now. I will give you the rivers of water that will meet your thirst continually. The question is this. Are you paying attention to spiritual emptiness? Are you paying attention to... Do you know how many of you... Many of you think you have weight problem. You don't have weight problem. The reason why you eat too much is because of spiritual emptiness. Because when you get depressed, instead of you running to the rivers of living water, you run to food. Some people, food is their way out of depression. And listen, every time you have a challenge, Jesus Christ said, come to me. I'm the one that has the river of living water. I'm the one that has the river of living water. Some people, when they have a challenge, they run to sex. And God says, come to me. I'm the one that has the river of living water. Some people, when they have a challenge, they go to alcohol. God says, come to me. The reason why is this. All those things you run to cannot help you because it's a God-sized hole. The alcohol will come, but it can't fill it. The food will come, but can't fill it. Nothing can fill it because it's a God-sized hole. What can you do that can fill a God that God made for himself? And this is what you do. So you, you, did you give me, where's my tablet? Did you give it to me? Oh, wow. It's here. So some of you, these are the things you use to fix it. Who wants to use this tablet? Can I, can I volunteer to get someone to use a tablet? Let me see. Who wants to use a tablet? Let me just see someone that. I can really trust. Oh, be nice. Over there, come. Yeah, come use a tablet. Yeah. You're not going to die. You're a huge guy. <laughs> so, every time, see, so this is the point. Every time the hole is here, you bring your tablet to fill the hole. So, just swallow it. It's nothing. Just trust me. Just swallow it. It's okay. Just try it. Try it. You can get some water. Just try it. It's vitamin C. Yeah. I, I can't lie to you. You know that, right? Yeah. Vitamin C. I have mine. You, you have, you have to, but, but this is, this, but it, it, how many vitamin C's do you have in a day? Okay, but that's really empty. There's nothing in it, actually. You don't believe it? <laughs> do you, it, it you, you believe it? Okay, so, so you can, you can just, you can, you can chuck it in and watch something. Watch something. He didn't take it in. He's such, he's still believing that someone is there. But this is what I'm going to show you. Bring, bring it. I, I know you didn't take it in. You don't trust you? Oh, I trust you. I just don't think you're honest right now. <laughs> but look at it. Hold on, hold on. Come and help me with this. You need to hold this like this. Don't eat it. I know you. This is what it do. So we use all these capsules. And we swallow it. But the capsules are empty. They can't fit anything. Can't you see why your car is so empty? Because in comparison to that hole, it's empty. Can't you see why your marriage is not fulfilling? It's not your husband, it's not your wife. Because once you are empty on the inside, nothing can be fulfilled on the outside. It, it's empty. Everything. So we're, we're here taking all those things, quick fixes of all those drugs, quick fix all those drugs. I'm looking for the other tablets. And we're just swallowing and said, they said, this one will help. I swallow. This one will help. I swallow. This one will help. I swallow. I swallow. I swallow. But you're empty. And Jesus Christ looked at the church in Revelations. He said, you said, you're rich. You said, you're poor. You said, you're rich. You're satisfied. He said, but really, you're what? Wretched. How does God see you? Thank you. Thank you. Can I move it over there? Glory to God. And this is it, people. When something goes wrong on the inside, 
just remember this nothing can fix it on the outside what did i say absolutely nothing can fix it on the outside because it's a god-sized hole spiritual emptiness the people that hide behind religion they are empty but you know how they fix it i go to church i'm an usher the pastor knows me i give tithe and god says i know you do all those things but that's not for a relationship with me and you because what god wants is a relationship and some people just a god-sized hole when you have a god size or when you're spiritually empty how do you know number one this is how you know number one your faith becomes uncontagious what does that mean your faith begins to shrink you stop believing god for big and fresh things you start say let's reduce it let's do smaller things let's reduce it let's do smaller things let's reduce it let's do smaller things because it's just like a small faith what happened to you you were that huge lady of faith. You challenge our faith with how you believe God for your child. You challenge our faith with how you believe God for your job. What happened to you? You, have, you began to shrink. The second thing is this. Life becomes very overwhelming. Not because life has changed, but because your faith is so tiny, what it can carry so small. hallelujah i said hallelujah i said hallelujah i said hallelujah there's this huge unfulfillment you have and the reason because of this huge god-sized hole inside of you because there's something about knowing god psalm 63 verse 1 i love this psalm so much i love this psalm so much psalm 63 verse 1 do you have it on the screen psalm 63 verse 1 will you put it there oh glory to god something you should mark in your bible something it says oh god my lord is this any will i seek thee my see what it says it says my, my soul thirst for you he said there's something about knowing god it's it even say my spirit it says my soul what is in your soul your emotions it says your feelings he says my feelings i literally crave i literally crave for you he says my soul thirst for you they, oh my god there's something about when you are drunk of the river when you are drunk on the river what other people are overwhelmed with you can stabilize lies people say hey but the doctor said you couldn't have a child you said yeah i heard the doctor he said but why are you not fearful you don't understand when i know him i know he is with me and if he is with me no matter what anybody says his plan will happen in my life this is what david says it david said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death so you lost money in your business and it seems as if it's going down he says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i will fear no evil not because there is no fear he says because you are with me you are going through a tough time in your marriage and everyone is going crazy and people say why are you so calm you say you don't understand though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death there's something about divine presence that brings divine assurance something about divine presence I said, but your son is not behaving well. You say, you don't understand. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And, and the reason why I'm bold is not because I'm strong. The reason why I'm bold is because he's a person that is going with me in the valley of the shadow of death. His name is Wu. Oh, I, I didn't hear that well. Jesus. Scream it like you can. And, and the doctor says, Madam, what are you going to do? Say, it's, it's okay. Because I don't just have a rela I don't just know God or know of God. I have a relationship with God. But when you're spiritually empty, you know what? You will always be afraid because you know when the ship sinks, there's no one to call on. When the storm was hitting the boat, the apostles ran to Jesus because they knew he was there. 
who do you run to when the storm hits your boat and Jesus is not in that boat? Who do you run to when the storm hits your business and Jesus is not in that business? Who do you run to when the storm hits your finance and Jesus is not in that finance? Spiritual emptiness. You can be religious and be empty. There's something. See, knowing God is like sugar. I don't know if you know what sugar does. Once you taste sugar, you need to have more sugar. That's how God is. God is the person you know. You feel satisfied, but you know that you need to know him some more. The more I know you, is the more I want to know you, Jesus. More. <laughs> the more I know you, choir, bring it with spirit now. The more, more I, I know you, you the, more the more I want to know you. The more I know you, the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Listen to me. You know why I want to know him? Because the presence of God brings assurance. I told you before, I said, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. Listen to me, businessman, you are going to go to the valley of the shadow of death in your business. It's not a prophecy of doom. It's what happens. It's life. In life, there'll be seed time and harvest. There'll be, there'll be spring. It's season. But the good thing is that no matter the season, if the one that controls the season is with me, I know that I'm going to come out on the other side. Spiritual emptiness. When people are spiritually empty, you see them. You know, church is optional, prayer is optional. They say, you know, wake up early for prayer. Say, it's so difficult to wake up early. The reason why is that there's emptiness. What, see, the, this is the thing. What, once you put value on something, because a lot of you say, oh, you know, pastor, you know, I, I'm not really a morning person, but if you have an American visa embassy, an American embassy visa appointment for 6 a.m., you will not even sleep. But when they say next level is 6.30, they say, I'm not a money person. And God says, visa is more important to me. And God sees it. If you have a contract to pick up a check for 7 a.m., by 4 you are up to make sure you're, you're not late. And you're wondering, why am I empty? Empty people don't value the things of the Spirit. You want to get, you want to get full? You must learn how to value the things of the Spirit. It's value. For, I give an example. Some of our pastors, it are been so tired. Maybe it's their birthday or something. And I show up in their house. And I show up not because I have energy, but just the value I place on them. Listen to me. When God told Abraham to kill his son, God was not looking for a human sacrifice. God was just saying that, Abraham, what do you value more? Do you value me? Or you value your son? Do you value me? What carries more weight in your life? Is it me or your son? Is it me or your son? And the same question to you today. Some of you are dealing with spiritual emptiness and you're wondering, how will I deal with this spiritual bankruptcy? What carries more weight to you, husband or Jesus? What carries more weight to you, convenience or Jesus? What carries more weight to you, time, your work or Jesus? What carries more weight to you? Oh my God. When people are empty, when they come to church, they find fault with everything. You know why? Because they see life from an empty perspective. They think things are wrong with all the churches and the pastors and Christians. They don't know that something is wrong with them. Have you seen someone that is hungry before and the hunger is affecting his sight? He will say, everything is looking, like everything is falling. Brother, nothing is falling. You are the one that is hungry. The reason why you think the whole world is crumbling is because something has happened to you. The reason why you think that nothing is working, something has happened to you. Listen, nothing changed. You are the one that changed. You are the one that has come. That's what the Bible says. He that what dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide what? Under the shadow of the Almighty. He didn't say he that visits. There's a difference between dwelling and between visiting. When you visit, it's not where you stay. When you dwell, that's where you live. In the morning, I dwell. In the evening, I dwell. At night, I dwell. I dwell in the secret place of the most high it's my place it's my place when i visit i don't sleep there i visit and go back i visit and go back but when i dwell no matter where i go to i must come back home because it's my dwelling place we need to know the power of staying in the dwelling place god's people shout amen, amen. Yeah. 
How do I deal with spiritual emptiness? The first in Revelation. Why? First Peter 2, 2 says, Revelation is spiritual food. Someone says, you know, Pastor, I don't really know how, you know, the Bible makes me, I feel tired when I read the Bible, I sleep off. I say, you sleep off when you read the Bible? But when you read blogs, you stay awake. It's a function of value. Someone says, I'm not the reading type. But you read your contract of employment. <laughs> I don't know someone that did not read his contract of employment. At least you read the payment session. You knew what you were getting paid. The reason why you read was because you valued money. God says, if you value me, you will spend time. And revelation has a sustaining power. <laughs> Have you seen people that come to church? They didn't even come with the Bible. I wonder why they come. People at home watching, they don't even have anything to write. They just watch on the bed and say, oh, wow, that's nice. That's not how you listen to the word of God. You get your pen and keep a note and say, what is God going to say to me right now? Because I have to go back and work this. I learned it in, in church. You learn something. Throughout the week, you have to walk in what you learned. Revelation. The second way is this. <laughs> I mean, let, let's read that verse again. Romans, um, Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. He says this. Because you say, I'm rich. I'm increasing goods. So from the human perspective, we look at them and say, oh, this girl is so successful. This couple is so nice. And that's the way human beings see them. God says, wretched. God says, wretched. They say, oh, wow, she's so popular. God says, naked. Oh, she's so fly. God says, wretched. The second way you deal with spiritual emptiness is this through obedience you know why the bible says to obey is better than sacrifice to obey is better than sacrifice i want to ask you where are you so struggling with god about what are you so struggling with god about what are you still struggling with your creator about? Sincerely, excuse me, ma'am, you think you're going to win? You're struggling with the ancient of days and you think you'll win the battle? It doesn't make sense. God says to obey is better than sacrifice. You can justify all you want to justify, God knows. Some of you, God is dealing with you about a relationship you should leave or be in. Some of God is dealing about some decisions you should, you should, you should consider or should release. Some of God is dealing with you about forgiveness. Some of God is dealing about bitterness. God is dealing with you about your commitment to Him because you are here sitting at home and saying it's COVID, but meanwhile it's not COVID, you've just been lazy. Some of you Sunday morning, God says, get up and go to church. He says, I will go next week. And God says, now! And the bad thing about not obeying God's voice is this. Every time you don't obey the voice of God, the voice of God goes weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker until you stop hearing it. I never said He stopped speaking. You stop hearing it. How do I mean? One time I went to sleep. I wanted to sleep in a house near the airport. And I couldn't sleep because all through the night, planes kept on going boom, boom, boom. So when I woke up in the morning, I told my friend, I said, how do you live here? He said, what's wrong? I said, I couldn't sleep. The planes. He said, oh, all you need is two weeks. You'll stop hearing them. I said, what do you mean? He said, when I moved into this place, I was to stop for two weeks. But after two weeks, he said, since you, are not, you don't want to respond to it, your, st your ears stop hearing them. He's not said the plane stopped landing and flying, but your system stopped recognizing it. The bad thing about disobeying what God says or not following divine guidance or not obeying God is this. After some time, you will stop speaking spiritual instructions. And some of you, you wonder what happened to the voice of God. That's what happened. You stop speaking spiritual instruction because after a pattern of not obeying, there's no need for you to pick it up again because you're not going to what? Obey it. Mmm. Mmm. And you say, Shanda la ma, 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 speak, Lord. God says, I've been speaking, but you're not picking signals. How many of you have got struggled with you about career, relationship, even your finances? God tells you, this is the season for you to save. How many of you have got speaking to you? And every time I say, this, this tithing thing, this giving thing, this percentage thing, you need to start giving at a certain level. And God is pushing you. And when God pushes, you say, God, no, no, no. You push back. And you push and you push. And God says, ah. 
How many of you have God told you it's time to start serving? You said you will start serving in 2020. It went away. This 2020, half of the year, you're still struggling. You're still struggling. You're still struggling. God has been telling you, you know, God gave you this idea and you have to take a step towards it. This is half of the year. You've not taken the step because you're afraid. God has pulled in your heart. Do this, do that. You're afraid. Don't you understand? To obey better than sacrifice. And let me say something to you. There's no amount of prayer that can cover for disobedience. There, and there's no amount of prayer that can cancel obedience. You can't pray obedience away. All you do when it comes to obedience is to obey. That's what it, all you do when it comes to obedience is to obey. And let me tell you something. The most difficult kind of obedience is the change of mind. Because when God wants to really change you, he begins to change the way you see something. But many of us are, the Bible calls it stiff necks people. We are so hard on to what we think we don't want to change. Let's close. And the last thing, this, 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 is how, this is how God begins to do with us with emptiness. God begins to take your attention from yourself. And he begins to ask you to serve people. <laughs> Why does God do that? God looks at your flesh and he wants to break it. Service. And let me say something to you. The biggest fulfillment in life is not going to come from what you did for yourself. It's going to come from what you did for other people. If you're here and fulfillment is your dream, have you noticed when you buy a car, you're happy, one month it's gone. When you move to a new house, you're happy, it's gone. When you make this amount of money, one week you're happy, it's gone. But have you noticed the biggest thing that brings fulfillment? It's how you are able to become a blessing to somebody else. And everyone, and the reason why you're not fulfilled is because your gift is crying. Many of you are carrying destinies that are beyond you. But your selfishness is not allowing you to see beyond it. And destiny is crying. God is saying, I want you fulfilled. I want you to grow. And it's crying out of you. But you're not paying attention to the cry of destiny on your inside. How many of you here have gifts you are not using? How many of you are going to die with gifts that you will never use? How many of you are going to die with gifts that you carry on the inside? And it's crying there. And God is saying, I want to fulfill. I want to express progress. But the way you express progress is by what? Releasing your gifts. How many of you have the gift of encouragement? But will never release the gift in the cell meeting. How many of you have the gift of hospitality and you can welcome people to church and you will never use the gift? How many of you have the gift of generosity and you can use your money to help other people but you'll never help other people? How many of you have the gift of coaching people to do well in life and do businesses but you will keep it? And the reason why you keep it is this. You understand deploying your gift needs you to stretch and you're willing to stretch. How does God grow you? God puts you in uncomfortable situations so that you can stretch. He puts you there so that you can stretch stretch but you refuse this is you you want the glory but you don't want to stretch god says that's not how we do it i put you in a un circumstance uncomfortable so that you can stretch for the flower to turn to cake it must stay in the baking oven god needs to take you to the baking oven so that he can bake you well what it bakes you initially looks mercy but later on it looks good is that not what happens Someone says, you know, I don't have time. God said, exactly. You need to have time to fulfill destiny. No wonder he said, he said, blessed. <laughs> That's why he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And when he said give, I'm not just talking about money. What you have to give. You know why? Because every time you give, the one that receives what is given has happiness. The one that gives has what? Joy. And joy is superior to happiness. David could have seen Goliath and said, Hey Goliath, Goli, Saul, bye. <laughs> That's your problem. But David said, destiny is calling. 
destiny is calling destiny how many of you have friends you can even invite to church how many of your friends you can invite to nlp how many of you know how you can help other people serve your community serve the church serve the country i know you want to be blessed but the way you're going to be blessed is by releasing what you have and this morning it's, it's just a big thing the more i know you it's a place of surrender. Many of you have struggled for such a long time. I don't know if it's, if it's COVID that affected your Christianity. It's good to do next level prayer. Pray for ourselves. Pray for ourselves. The biggest prayer is when we begin to pray for nations. When we begin to pray for countries. Pray for missionaries. That, that's the biggest kind of prayer. Why we don't pray for ourselves. We pray for other people. Because it's not about me again. It's what God can do for other people. I want to be the light of God. Not in my life. For other people. Some of you need to stand in the gap for your family. And say, hey, I'm standing for my family. It's good to know what God can do for you. That's wonderful. But it's better to know what God can do through you. What God will God do through you? How many lives will be changed because of you? How many lives will be transformed because of you? Question, when last did you hit your chest and say, I feel so fulfilled? What did you do? Most of the time, by the time you hit your chest, it was something outside yourself that brought you fulfillment. Question, why not make it a lifestyle of fulfillment? Not a one-off, but a lifestyle. And what you don't get fulfilled by chance, you'll get fulfilled by taking intentional steps and say this is what I'm doing I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to know God some more revelation I'm going to obey his voice but I'm also going to serve there are many of you in this church today either online or offline I don't know where you are you need to find the way and say that you know I've been sitting on the bench for a long time I need to start serving because I'm 40 I'm 50 I'm 30 I'm 80 I'm 60 I don't want to die unfulfilled I'm a beautiful girl unfulfilled and there's something, listen to me, there's something about killing Goliath that creates a pathway to your dream. David understood that. Hallelujah. But what do we start from? Knowing him. Don't go for the religion. Know him. You bring the fire. Know him. Experience God for yourself. Experience God for yourself. Oh, glory to God. You provide the fire. Uh huh. I become the sacrifice. Sacrifice. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. At a level coach. Lord, no more disobedience. Lord, no more disobedience. Oh, Jesus. 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 Sate ke shada ta 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 da 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 to live a fulfilled life I want to live a fulfilled life I want to live a fulfilled life Amen lift up your hands towards heaven Father I want to deal with this spiritual emptiness I want to deal with spiritual bankruptcy I want to live a life that fulfills destiny. I don't want to be paralyzed. Let this life be a sacrifice. Let you bring the fire. I'm the sacrifice. I'm the sacrifice. I want to hear the married men pray. In my family, Lord, bring the fire. I'm the sacrifice. I want to hear the single girls pray. I want to hear the married women pray. I 
want to hear the single man prayer. I talk a sharp at a lava kumbaya. Iso pe shaga, raba mani to pe no shaga talava. Iso pe no kopro tana. All of you online, anywhere you're watching, for stand on your feet, lift up your hands. Sike, 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 sike. I want to die empty. I don't want to die with destiny. I don't want to die with dreams. I want to fulfill destiny. I want to live a progressive life. I want to live a fulfilled life. No more disobedience. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Shanti Kondai, Shaki Tamambos, Eki Poroda Antai, Sali Titikinate, Labone Karitomai, Say the Pretty Nito, Finate. Hallelujah. We will stop looking for fix quick, quick, quick fix in capsules. We will start looking up to the river of life. It's time to pay attention to the hole you carry. Everyone carries a hole. Right now, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Touching, feeling. Some of you, the hole is there. But you're so distracted. You look at your life and all you pay attention is all these things on the side. You pay attention to the marriage, the car, the children, the money, the promotion. And God says, I'm calling your attention to this hole because this is how our life is. And Father, we receive grace today. We receive grace today to live a life that's it's based on the word, full of obedience, and lastly, serve with it. I, I'm asking you, Spirit of God, begin to trouble people, begin to place burdens of them to serve, to lead, to stand up for you, to serve with the time, to serve with their talent, to serve with their resources. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God's people say, Amen. God bless you, you can have your sins.